On Tuesday, we saw the price of Bitcoin go from almost $37,000, fall all the way below 35. Now, a lot of people are asking the question, is this the end of this bull run for Bitcoin? And are we about to at least retest some support levels down towards $30,000? Or is it possible that this was a small pullback before another rally continues? Well, in this video, I'm sitting down with Christopher Inks, a multi-year expert in the trading field and someone who follows the Bitcoin, the crypto, and the stock market finance world very, very closely. He's an Elliott Waves expert. He's a Wyckoff expert. And we ask his opinion on what this most recent pullback for Bitcoin means about future price action. Give it a look. Today, we're recording this the night of November. 14th. Recently, we've seen Bitcoin have a huge drop. I think crash is probably a strong word for it, but we went from being over 36,000, flirting with 37,000 earlier this morning, falling all the way below 35,000. The question that I have, and I think that most people have, is was that $38,000 wick, was that the top of this bull trend? Or are we going to see a higher uh, price action come in later? I know you're an expert on, on two things that I absolutely love using, Wyckoff and uh, Elliott Waves. Now, I would love to get your explanation. What have you seen recently happen since 38000 and what could we expect here in the future? Would love to see your chart and, uh, and break that down. You know, we, we had that big breakout there. Uh, we had that multi-month uh, consolidation there for like seven months. Uh, you know, and then we broke out of that and everybody got all crazy. And uh, what's happened since then for the last few weeks, though, has been this, uh, you know, higher highs, higher lows, overlapping price action yeah. um, up into that recent swing high. And then, like you said, we had this kind of drop. But now that drop, though, um, just came right into like the, the the meat of that kind of consolidation. Yeah, well, why don't you just, why don't you go ahead and share your screen? Let's talk okay. about some of those levels and what you're seeing right there. All right, yeah. So this is the um, this is the the general chart I've been using here since uh, June of last year, uh, since we had this drop back here, and um, you know we just kind of continued to add to it since. Um, you know everything kind of happening as expected. We had two pullbacks here, uh, mm -hmm. two backups. Uh, usually we only have one, but you know no worries. I was still really you know talking about bullish and moving up in the breakout of here. But this is what I'm talking about. We had this, you know what we call the jump across the creek here. This breakout of this supply. And then what we've done, though, is we haven't pulled back. We've just kind of continued to uh, to rally up into um, up into the R1 pivot here on the daily. Mm. And so the pullback, as we can see here, though, hits right into this, just this overlapping price action here. And so I personally, uh, you know, if, if we're going to see a rally up off here, not only are we looking probably at 40 or 42,000. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but just the fact that uh, we came in sideways between the pivot and the R1, rallied up the pivot, pulled back into this congestion, and then take off higher, I mean, there's a good chance uh, that we could actually see this thing run all the way up here toward the R4, R5 pivot. Wow. Um, and, because and that's going to be over 50000 Yeah, yeah. Now, I'm not going to sit here and say, okay, that's going to happen this month or whatever. Right. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, I traded pivots for uh, about two years, just pivots alone, just so I could really get good with them. Uh, back around 2010, 2011. And the one thing I learned is, we turn this off here, when we're coming in sideways like this and we get a rally up the R1 and we don't actually get a, re we don't actually test the pivot as support. We just kind of pull back a little bit here and then we break out higher. Most of the time that rallies at least to the R4, if not the R5. And again, you know, that's, you're looking at 52 or even 57,000 there. Yeah. Kind of crazy to think about, but you know, again, we're we're in, we're in Q4, uh, and that's usually where Bitcoin is is actually the most bullish, right? November is the most bullish month historically for Bitcoin. So, yeah. Now, now let me ask you this, because this is this is really interesting what you're talking about here, because this is something I talk about a lot. Love that you brought it up. It, it's very common when you have a range of really high restricted restrictive levels, a resistance level. When you break through it, especially the way Bitcoin did, I, I joke that we, we burst through it like wet toilet paper, right? <laughs> it's very common to pull back and retouch that. And we're talking about the $31,000 to $32,000 yeah. range. Yeah. In your history, because you have been trading markets way longer than I have, in your history, how likely is it that that $31,000, $32,000, that former resistance level ends up not getting revisited? Uh, is that is that common or is it very common to go ahead and come back down, kind of close that door and then continue, uh, continue the price action to the upside? 
Well, most often, um, just in general, you know, we usually look for retest, right? And so even when I'm when I'm teaching traders how to trade, I'm like, listen, you know, sometimes you're going to get the breakout that continues going. Uh, but over time, you really just kind of want to look for that pullback, right? Um, mm -hmm. So that's usually what I look for. But it happens often enough um, where it doesn't actually pull back that we have to be aware of it. And really, because in this case, we did, you know, we got the big breakout and we didn't come back. Instead, we continued to print these higher highs and higher lows up here. Yeah. And that's where it gets interesting because all this, all this sideways, all this overlapping price action builds this base here, as you can see on the higher volume node right here. And that tells us the market's really interested in that level. You know, the market's not really interested here. Um, so, you know, right now, I, I think there's a good chance this, you know, find support in this area and breaks up. Mm. Okay. That's very interesting. Well, let's, let's take a look at this. Let's take a look at according to teachings of Wyckoff. Cause when I, when I do Wyckoff, I'm much better at reaccumulation zones and redistribution zones. So we're, we're talking about tops and bottoms, but there's phases that are heavily talked about the middle phases of accumulation when you have a rally and then you move sideways, and then you continue the upside. Yeah. How do you tell the difference when looking at Wyckoff? How do you tell the difference between a middle reaccumulation phase or a distribution phase like what we're in right now? Yeah, so uh, what I'll, I'll look at often is, you know, first of all, do we get a pullback pretty quickly? You know, it doesn't have to be immediate. It doesn't have to be, you know, one day up and next day down. But, you know, within a few days, are we getting this pullback? Or... Are we seemingly building a you know um, a base here and then mm. continuing to rally and pull back to that fine support, rally up, pull back to that fine support, and continue up going there? And so when we start seeing this, when it starts stretching out over weeks, and you know we're seeing this kind of thing going on, you know that increases the odds that we could find that support there because again the market is spending a lot of time in this area, and so mm. if the market's spending a lot of time here, it's becoming more interested. And so if you're on top of that, you know the market's going to act like. Um, uh, is going to act like support. If you drop down through it, they'll say, okay, well, we lost it. We're going to sell. So, you know, you get that extra kind of added oomph of, of the market already being interested in this lower level that you kind of pull back to. Interesting. Interesting. Well, what about, what about uh, when we look at Elliott waves, what, what are you looking at with Elliott waves right now? Uh, are we in an ABC type of pattern? Are we doing a one, two, three, four, five? Like where would we be in, in that kind of account? Yeah, so there's actually a, a couple of different ways you can look at this. Right now, the one I'm going for is the one I've been in for a while, which basically says, okay, we've got a one, two, and okay. then we've got an interior one and a flat as a two here. Um, okay. And so this one, two, one, two, when you have this kind of sequence following in, um, usually what it's going to give you is a, is, a, is a large wave three, a really strong, really powerful wave three. Um, and so if we look at that and we just kind of um, zoom back here a bit, uh, we can go up here and we can count this off. And all of a sudden, uh, you know, we're looking at this one, two, and then we're looking, you know, way up here, the, this this interior one, two, three is looking around 52,000 right there at that, wow. that R4 pivot. Uh, five waves up will give you 61.8. Uh, and that would be then one, two, three up here. So, mm. you know, we've got a lot of potential movement up to the top, but we've done a lot of sideways. I mean, we, you know, we did all this accumulation down here and then we went sideways here for reaccumulation for another seven months. I mean, we've yep. done a lot of sideways in here. Um, at some point, you know, we get the big break and the big rally. Now, the interesting thing about what we're doing locally here is, is this is something that if you look in the history of, of, of Bitcoin, historically, you're going to get these um, usually as, as the new bull market kind of emerges before everybody's overly into it. You'll start seeing where it does this, where you have these kind of, uh, people usually draw them as ascending wedges or uh, channels, and you'll get the breakouts and the takeoffs with it. Right. You don't ever get that that real pullback that everybody's waiting for. Now, now uh, that's really interesting. What do you what do you think about a potential? If you went back, I don't know if your chart goes all the way back here, but if you went back to 2019, uh, you know, right there after hitting the bear market bottom, we did have very explosive price action. I believe Bitcoin went somewhere close to, if not around. A, a 350% pump, but then it had a 50% pullback. You know, we're getting this nice pump, but is is that a potential that maybe we do go above 50,000? Maybe we even get to that 61,000 you talked about. And then we see somewhere between a 40, 50% pullback in price action 
back down to around that $30,000 level. Is that something that you are looking at? Or is that something that maybe it was that was just specifically 2019? We shouldn't look for a repeat movement. Well, what I know, what, what we know is if we look back historically, we usually get a um a retracement of about 618 at least, um, of the bear market mm. decline. Yeah. Uh, and we usually get that prior to the uh the happening. Yes. So in this case, you know, that would be just up here at around 37,585. Um, you know, off that off that swing low there coming from that entire kind of um uh well just about let me see I'm a little bit off there, a little bit higher there. That's about 39,000. So that gets us around that 40,000 area. Usually yeah. we get at least that before the the um before the halving, and then we pull back and you know into the halving there. So we get kind of like a wave one up and a pull back for a wave two and then a wave three kind of rally. Um mm. You know, and, and so we're right, right about there right now. But man, you know, like I said, it's just, it's just kind of November here, and we've spent, you know, uh, basically gone sideways here since uh, June of uh, 2022. So almost a year and a half. Most of that time has been sideways. Mm. So you know, and and you know, and this time, of course, we had a different. You know, we had the the dual peaks here um, coming off. You know, which is yeah. different than what we've normally had in the past. So, you know, the, these double tops may be leading into this longer kind of accumulation and reaccumulation area uh, potentially leads us to a strong, strong rally off there that does things a little bit differently. I don't know that I'd be on the side to say, okay, we're going to get above, you know, all-time high prior to happening or anything like that. Right. But, you know, as long as things continue to build as they are right now, I, I think, you know, you kind of, we kind of do ourselves a disservice if, if we start thinking lower. I, real quick here, man, you know, long story short, if we don't hold this area right here, I think we test the pivot as support. And that's just basically yeah. the top of the range. Um, and I would look for uh, look for a rally up off that, you know, and in a breakout higher. I mean, it really, if you really want to make it simple for people, I think that's the way we do it. If we yeah. don't rally here and break out, then, you know, we lose this kind of support in this area, we'll probably come down here to the pivot. Again, that's at 32,000 and change. Yeah. And then I would just be looking for a reversal in that area. Uh, to take it higher here and, and go out from that. I mean, I don't, I don't think, I know there's some bearish people out there that say, oh, you know, bear market bounce and, and some silliness like that. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, you know, I, I, honestly, I, I just, there's, there's nothing bearish about this, no matter how you look at it. You look at Elliott yeah. Wave, you can look at Wyckoff, you can look at uh, price action, uh, market structure. I mean, it's all bullish. Yeah, that's that would be quite the bearish bounce to get back above a fifty percent pullback. Uh, you know, we're we're less than a two x away from an all time high. Yeah. Uh, that would be quite the bull the bear market bounce. <laughs> One for the history books for sure. Definitely, definitely. But I mean, you know, the setup here has been great. You know, again, we had this fantastic accumulation. Uh, you know, I talked all about as it is happening into the uh, the terminal shakeout, all this kind of stuff. We had the, um, you know, again, the only thing that was a little bit different than what I thought was we actually had two backups here. And we usually only get one, but hey, it's all good. Uh, we looked at that as a flat when that started happening. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, again, just looking at potentially getting in this three of three and this big move up. Uh, that doesn't mean we go straight up, obviously. You know, if, if we're getting up here, um, you know, at 40 or 42, you know, we, we'll pull back, uh, you know, into the, you know, into the mid, low, mid or lower 30s here. Mm -hmm. uh, before we rally back up. And when we do, everybody probably be like, oh my God, it's the end of the world, but it's not, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, so really it's just kind of, do we stick here? Do we stick it here? If we can rally up and I think there's a, a decent chance we can, uh, we've got, uh, we've got hidden bullish divergence here on the RSI on the daily. Mm -hmm. we, we've reset Stoke RSI down and oversold, almost bottomed out down there. I mean, you know, it looks like it wants to, it looks like it wants to get ready to go here. It's, it's a, it's a three wave decline, right? So uh, three waves corrective. Now, by no means are we saying with 100% certainty, everything in this video is gonna play out perfectly. We can't say with anything that $50,000, $60,000 is coming within the next couple of months, but it's very interesting to see the charts and see past price action, not only from Bitcoin itself, but from other markets tell us that this would be a normal pullback before another rally continues. Let's watch over the next couple of weeks to see how this one plays out. But if you enjoyed the video and you enjoyed listening to Chris, make sure you A, go ahead and smash 
smash the like button and subscribe to the investing bros where we put out content every single day helping you navigate the crypto markets but also go ahead and check out christopher inc's channel it will be in the link down below make sure you check him out and with that said guys that's all we have for you in this video we'll see you in the next one